I was going in for my ultrasound to find out the sex of the baby, and um, they had found out one of my tests that came out uh, positive, my blood test, and um, so they sent me to um, a specialist at Terrebonne General to see exactly what was going on, and then she found out the defect. So then they sent me here to find out more exactly about the defect. Uh, as part of a prenatal testing, you do what's called a quad screen, and the quad screen actually will look to see if your baby's at risk for having a hole in its spine, and it just so happens that her quad screen back, back is positive, and it said, hey, look closer at this baby's spine, there may be something going on with it. She just let us know that it was a spinal defect and, you know, what can cause it and what we would be dealing with, and then she told me that we would have to come here to really figure out you know exactly where it was and exactly what our outlook was. Spina bifida is a failure of the closure of the back, particularly of both the spine and the spinal cord, uh, to properly form in the first month after the um, baby is being developed. And when that happens, it leads to a defect in the back and the spinal elements that actually stick out of the back, often in a sac, that can be non-functional. And that can lead to problems with movement of the limbs below that level of, of impairment. It can involve sensation impairment below the level. Use of the bowel or the bladder properly is difficult due to those. And there's also an association with hydrocephalus or fluid in the brain that accumulates due to that abnormality. Back in 1997 was the, the first procedure where they actually were, where someone took the chance of saying, let's open up the uterus, let's close this defect, and let's see if we can't keep these, these outcomes from happening, or can we make better outcomes. Between 1997 and 2003, there was about 200 of these cases done across the nation, and people were saying, hey, we're getting better outcomes with these babies than we are if we left them alone. And there was a lot of debate about, well, is it really worth the risk to the maternal health? Is it really worth the risk to the fetal health? This is a dangerous thing to do. Some of the medicines that you're doing are very dangerous for the pregnancy. Is this really the right thing to do. And so what happened was back in 2003, the NIH supported a study what they called the MOMS trial. All the pediatric surgeons got together and said, we are not gonna offer this until we kind of get an idea if this makes a difference or not. And so that was actually published in 2011 in the New England Journal of Medicine. And that's the study that really kind of got us fired up here is because it actually showed that there are better outcomes. These babies do better with this in utero procedure. And so me and Dr. Bowie had got together and said, listen, this is something that we need to offer in the region. I think we have enough volume of these babies that we see in my clinic to make this technique that we can offer here at Ostern. So we're able to actually have a window up in the uterus and then be able to bring just the babies back through. So once we're able to get to the defect, then uh, the night take over and under high magnification, we'll actually do the repair. That's the good thing about Ostner is that we have pediatric neurosurgeon, we have a pediatric cardiologist, we have a high-risk pregnancy doctor, we have high-risk anesthesia. We've got everything that we need here. The team was well prepared and that gave me a lot of confidence that yeah, we would be able to pull it off without a problem. We've been fortunate so far, none of those children as of yet have required uh, a shunt to be placed for hydrocephalus. They're doing very well with their growth. They do still continue to have some bowel and bladder problems, but they're very manageable. And they have had less overall orthopedic and neurologic impairment because of the surgery than they likely would have otherwise had. I think it's definitely um, a landmark procedure for Oscar, but it's also a landmark procedure for the state. I think this is the first in the state, if not the region. Currently, there are less than 10 programs in the country, and that's because it does require quite a bit of expertise. I think that this really does highlight what Osher does well, which is to bring together a lot of high-end subspecialists um, into one area. His name is uh, Kobe Damien Boudreaux. He weighed four pounds and 12 ounces when he was born and uh, 17 inches and a half long. Pretty much after the surgery, his outcome is pretty much good. You know, he's, uh, he's moving his legs like he should and his ultrasound of his brain came out fine, and um, his incision looks good, so he's doing pretty good. Okay, so this doesn't look very dissimilar from yeah. just a normal baby without spina bifida at this point. That's good. Okay, so, so I think that, you know, the, at least right now, I don't have any real concern for a shunt. And as far as the back and 
whether there's any leakage or a breakdown of the glue in the back looks about as good as we can hope for it. Yeah, I think I think that's you know because the baby had all that time to heal within their yeah. belly. Yeah. You had mm -hmm. the absolute best result yeah. that uh, that we could very, have very a whole happy about it. Yeah, so yeah. we'll we get them. Auction has always been on the forefront in, in a number of areas of trying to do things that are game changers, really make a difference for the patient. And this is one of those instances where you really are making a difference for the patient. And over the years, there have been some of those in adults and some of those in children. And this is one that is really going to be a great advance for children. Now that he's here and we've gone through everything, I'm very, very happy that we went ahead and did it because his outcome does look a lot better than what it would have been if we didn't do the surgery. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, you know, the difference for a family having a wheelchair bound kid versus a kid that can, you know, that can walk. That's what makes it worth it is his ability to really change one's kid's whole entire life with an operation early on.